far away with them, the people of Quraysh. Hud lived on, and then he had another prophet coming out from his tribe named Saleh. The people went back to Shirk. Why? The people that came from those who were with Hud what did they do? They started to come up with ideas again. They saw the remnants of their forefathers. And they thought, wow, let's continue. And Shirk came back, subhanAllah. Maybe within about 200 years. Salih alayhi salam was sent to a people called Thamud. They were the cousins of Ad, another tribe. Allah says in the Quran that Salih said exactly the same thing to his people as Nuh and Hud. They said, oh my people worship Allah. <laughs> Thamud did exactly the same thing and they were even more advanced than Ad. And today you will see in Jordan, in a place called Petra, their buildings, their architecture, their homes that were carved into the mountains in, a, in the most magnificent way, inside of hills and mountains, rocks. As Allah says in the Quran, and go and look at the remnants of those who were before you whom Allah destroyed as a result of their own deeds. Thamud built and carved palaces in mountains as well. These people were the elites, they were too proud, and they refused to follow Salih. So Allah sent to Salih something to make a challenge to them. He said to them one day, he gathered them and said, What will make you believe? What do you want me to show you? What do you want me to, to do to prove to you? Allah SWT talks about how they came together and the elites wanted to make fun of Saad. One of them said, All right, we want you to bring us a she camel out of nowhere. It can't be born, it has to be. Like that. And it has to be a female. Why? Because they valued female camels because they can breed. It's very expensive. Another guy jumps up and he says, Ah, oh, I know, I know. Not only has it come from nowhere, see that rock over there? Big rock. He said, It has to come out of that rock. A third person stood up and said, Not only does it have to come out of that rock, it has to come out pregnant for months. With a male camel. And everybody started laughing. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, yeah, what else? What else? Think of other things. Laughed and laughed and laughed. When they stopped laughing, Salih looks at them and he said, If I did this by the will of Allah, will you believe? They said, Yes, of course we'll believe. She came out of nowhere, out of a rock, pregnant. Of course we'll believe. Miracle. He said, okay, wait. They waited. <coughs> Time passed. And truly, subhanAllah, it is in the Quran. One day they gathered and they saw this rock started to crack. And wallahi, before their eyes, out came a she camel. When it came out, everybody started going, oh, what's this, what's this, what's this? Instead of believing, they were more astonished about how it came out. What trick is this? What magic? What technological advancement is this? Instead of saying this Allah created it, they said, let's figure out the formula and what they used for this to come out. Salih said, hold on. This is Nafatullah. This is Allah's she camel. There are conditions. It's sacred. None of you is allowed to harm it or own it. Number two, no one is allowed to prevent it to graze in any place it wants. Number three, there is a well in our village, it's in the city. That well, the whole tribe is to drink from that well. It says, this she camel needs to drink. It was the biggest she camel we've ever seen in our life. It needs a whole day to drink from the well. No one's allowed to touch the well for a whole day. So one day for the she camel, and one day the city can drink from the well. You have to share it with the she camel. You ask for it, you have to now take responsibility. But subhanAllah, only a few believed. The rest didn't even believe. And they all wanted this she camel. They wanted it for themselves. They wanted to make fortunes out of it. Allah commands you that this she camel is a trust 
said, Ya Qawmi, O oh my people, this is the Shay Kamal of Allah for you, as you ask. SubhanAllah, the Shaytan came to them and they listened, and these people proved to be filled with evil themselves. They started to see the she camel as a burden on them. It started drinking from the well one whole day, and the whole village had to wait one whole day for the next day to drink from it. They got annoyed of that. And it gets to graze anywhere it wants, it's eating our crops. So they devised a plan and get rid of it once and for all. We don't want that truth looking at us in the face. <laughs> SubhanAllah. There were nine groups of troublemakers in that community. Whenever the leaders of the community wanted to do something corrupt, Obviously, the leaders cannot ruin their reputation. They've got to look like they are just and fair and out there for the people. They get these guys to do their dirty work. So Allah says, and in their city, there were nine gangs. They always, their purpose was to corrupt everybody's lives. They came to them and said, what can you do for us? These nine said, we'll kill them and nobody can blame anyone and there is no proof or evidence. So they went into the mountains. They found the she camel and its baby. And as Allah says, they said in the hadith that they could hear its screaming throughout the entire city and its baby. Distributed its meat and used its leather. Salih found out before the nine groups went and got to him and his family. And Allah said to Salih, They have broken the treaty with them and not between them and Allah. You have warned them. You have advised them. I gave them exactly what they asked for. This is now proof that the judgment is final. These people are corrupt in nature. And they will never make justice or goodness on in the land except corruption. Therefore, there is no need. For people whom I created, who will only corrupt in the land, it's time to take them away. So Salih said to them, Ya Qawmi, my people, for doing that, I warned you. They said, what are you warning us? Bring about Allah's punishment on this earth as you have warned and promised. We are waiting, you foolish man. And he said, wait, three days. SubhanAllah, Allah still gave him three days to repent. And Allah said to Salih and his family, run and do not look back. And Allah brought the first day, their faces turned yellow. They started to cry. Oh my God, it's a plague, it's a disease. But they did not repent. Then the second day, their faces turned red. And the third day, their faces, faces turned dark. On the fourth day, Allah did not bring upon them a breeze or a, what do you call it, a tornado like He did to the people of Arab. He brought upon them colors of punishment. There was a earthquake, a flood, and there was a, something called a saifa. Saifa means the angel of the comes and screams until their ears pop. He took them and Allah says, far away, away with the people of Arab and the people of Samir. When Salih came back to see the city, he saw them all dead. And he got sad for them. And he said, Ya Qawm, my people, I advised you, but you do not like those who advise you. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Ad and Thamud are the only two tribes who became extinct among the Arab world, the Arab bloodline. And Allah says in the Qur'an, we left their buildings as a sign after you so that you may reflect. Their buildings in Jordan, in Petra, are still there, of Ad. And of Thamud, their buildings are still there in Saudi Arabia today, a few kilometers outside of Medina. Rasulullah said in the hadith which is in Sahih Muslim and Bukhari, when he went to the battle of Tabuk, fighting the Romans, 
they pass by the buildings of Thamud. Huge castles and buildings carved into the mountain. And the Prophet said, these are the places of the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed as a result of their own doings. So do not pass them as a form of amusement, but rather pass by them while your heads are down and weep. My brothers and sisters in Islam, such was the story. Salih alayhi salam then took his family and went to Philistine, Jerusalem. Salih died there. And after him, the people had another chance. But subhanAllah, yet again, the false came to the surface. And people returned to the worshipping of idols and deities other than Allah alone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent another messenger of Allah, a prophet by the name of Ibrahim. 